All right, today I am going to show you how you can stress SQL Server. There might be so many reasons why you may want to do that. For example, you are recreating a production scenario and you want to do some performance troubleshooting or you might have written a piece of code and you want to test it against a server that is under a lot of pressure or you may just be playing around with SQL Server the way I do all the time. Whatever your reason be, let's get started. I will first minimize the VM and, and take you directly to the to Google and look for a utility called RML Utilities for SQL Server. RML stands for Replay Markup Language and this utility is developed by Microsoft and they keep updating it all the time. Let's open this page right on the, the first link that you get and you get all the details about the utility itself, introduction, version history, and as you keep scrolling down and ignore a lot of that information, you will see that there are some examples here. Uh, this utility is a collection of executables like retrace.exe, but our focus for today is ostress.exe. Now, ostress.exe is the executable that we are going to use exactly today to stress SQL Server. Now, look at the statement out there can i take it in notepad and just kind of copy this to show you a bigger version okay there you go that's better now ostress.exe hyphen e here the parameter stands for trusted connection you are connecting to the master database that is small hyphen d then the other parameters are like hyphen capital q there which is the query itself or you might use a different parameter to input a file name. That's hyphen I, I think. We'll see that in the code. And then these are the two most important parameters that you want to know, hyphen N, small n, which is the number of threads that you want to run this query against, which means you want to create 30 connections. How many connections you want to send to SQL Server? And each connection, when they are executing this query, <clears throat> excuse me, each connection when they're executing this query, how many times you want that to be repeated? That is defined by parameter hyphen R. So these are some of the basic parameters. And if you look at the help file there for all command line switches, you can always say ostress.exe space slash question mark. And then you get a list of all the parameters and switches. Now what we need to do is we have to download this utility and we'll go install it in the VM and then let's um, let's run it. So <clears throat> I am going to go and um, say download. Oops, is the search coming up? Okay, there you go. And looks like I get update 2021. There you go. And this is RML Utilities for SQL Server Update 2021. And you can go ahead and download it from here. Read all other instructions that are there. It's a very straightforward, simple installation. Let's jump over back to the VM. I'll open up the folder where I have it here. Mm, not here. So let's go to C and you will have it in... Come on. Okay. And in SQL Maestro's. There you go. So I have RML set up here, AMD 64. So this is the 64 bit version of the utility that I've downloaded and installation is already done on this VM. So I'll tell you installation is very straightforward. You just double click on it. It's a single click installation. When it is installed in program files folder, a, a folder gets created by the name of Microsoft Corporation. And uh, this, is, uh, this is interesting because this is the first and the only time I have seen a Microsoft utility or an application creating a folder by the name of Microsoft Corporation. So amusing. Yeah. So inside Microsoft Corporation, let's go inside. Don't know VM is behaving very slow already. Anyways, you have RML utilities and here you have ostress.exe. This is the one that we are talking about. So we are going to run this now. So let's go and into the workload folder and I'm going to test this. Now let's test this. Before we test, let's go to SQL Server Management Studio and see how many threads we have, how many connections, how many users are there right now in SQL Server. <coughs> 
spraying for water. Okay, so I'm going to say select star from sys.dm underscore os underscore threads and let's go and execute this. Okay. Ah, no, I don't want this. I actually want a count. So we'll see a count. Okay, so we can see we have about 129 connections right now, 129 threads to be more precise. And we are going to stress SQL Server. So we'll see, we'll create probably uh, 200, 300 more threads now. Also, let's go and look into the task manager and see how's our server doing in terms of CPU and memory but mostly CPU because the workload that we are going to run will not be memory intensive, but it might be, it might need a lot of CPU. So let's jump over to the performance tab and you can see the overall CPU utilization is sitting nicely right now at 1%, 2% and 3%. These are very happy metrics that you would love to see all the time. Okay. So this is our basic setup done there. So let's go back to the workload folder and Let's first open the CMD file here. So I've created a command file here, CMD file, and I have punched in the full URL of OStress utility here, and the same switches that you saw earlier, which is a trusted connection, and I am connecting. So I've not specified the database name because that's already there in the file. So yes, this was the switch I was talking about, hyphen I, which is the client workload.sql, and we'll see what that workload is. And then we have hyphen n. So I'm creating 200 connections here. And uh, we are connecting to the SQL Maestro's server there. That is hyphen s. And pause, which means once it's done, uh, we are, um, uh, I need to, of course, it's going to run in command line. So command prompt. So I it won't end. I need to press a key to end the execution. Now, I'm not here. I'm not using the hyphen r here. It's not needed, but yeah, up to you if you want to use it. Let's open the workload. So this is the workload that I'm using. Select star from sales order detail. As I said, the name of the database is right here. So I did not use it there in the switch itself. Order by line total descending, I don't need this. Okay, so I'm just going to skip this. <coughs> so we are all set. And we're creating 200 connections. Remember our number was about 129. Let's go and run this workload now where are you okay and we'll also see how we are doing in terms of cpu there you go worker threads created beginning execution lot of data out there let's go to sql server and check straight away from 129 to kind of 293 threads out there so there were some threads that were sitting idle in the thread pool that have been utilized. So we are touching about 300 threads there. Let's go and look into CPU performance and wow, suddenly you will see that CPU performance choked for some time. And is the execution already done? Oh, the execution is already done. So I need to stress SQL Server a little better. So what we should do is while one equals to one, now this will do the job. Okay, let's do this once more. Anyway, we are stressing SQL Server. We so need to try multiple things. Let's do this once more in the workload folder. Now we're going to run that in a loop. Okay, so we are back to our count. Let's go and see how many threads are there. Now SQL Server is under stress. Okay, so you see a simple select statement now it takes time to execute. So we saw the number 300. And this would be something similar now, 301, all good. Let's go and look into the performance tab. There you go. SQL Server is under heavy stress now. So you have CPU touching and spiking at 100% flat. That's 100% utilization. Mind you, this query was not memory intensive. So you will not really see spikes with the memory out there. But yes, CPU is choking now. And of course, you can, in client workload or, or your SQL script, you can write all sorts of things to make it like CPU intensive, memory intensive, IO intensive, whatever you wish to do. The utility, utility is only helping you here to create so many different connections to SQL Server, simultaneous connections, simultaneous threads, and this overall execution. And now when SQL Server is under stress, you're free to do whatever you want to do. 
Hope you enjoyed this video and hope you have learned something new and you may want to try this around. But a word of caution, please do this only with your test box, your test environment. Don't try to do all this stuff with your, you know, dev environment where you're doing serious development and of course not on your production boxes. Happy sequel. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sequelmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter at the rate SQL Maestros and myself A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.